eggs, but is it man's best friend? This ground drone, known as a robo-dog, could soon be patrolling our nation's southwest border. The federal government partnering with Ghost Robotics, testing out robo-dogs to potentially assist customs in border protection. A statement from the Department of Homeland Security reads, The goal of the program is to leverage technology to force multiply the CBP presence, as well as reduce human exposure to life-threatening hazards. Gavin Kennelly, chief product officer at Ghost Robotics, says the dogs can traverse all types of natural terrain, as well as human-built environments. Agent Brett Becker of the CBP Innovation Team explaining the dogs could help agents not only avoid that sort of terrain, but those who wish to do them harm. Instead of fixing, fixing our immigration systems, understanding the, the, the pushes and pulls of the immigration process and try to actually fix what is broken, I mean, we continue to invest in this enforcement only approach that includes this technology. Not everybody sees the dogs as a solution. Th- that's a fallacy. I mean, that is not going to help uh, to resolve the situation that we have at work. Advocacy groups like the Border Network for Human Rights and ACLU calling them a misuse of funds, raising concerns about privacy. We're running forward on how we collect mass amounts of information and intrusive information on people and and communities like border communities. And we're not taking a step back to say, is this the direction we want our uh, American society to head? And also, are there policies in place behind these technologies that ensure Um, that they won't be used in an abusive manner. Security announced it has been working with Ghost Robotics to develop a robot dog for the U.S.-Mexico border. Jane Robles reports why, live. Jane? Good evening, Cass. Both Democrats and Republicans have long agreed that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection needs more technology to monitor the 2,000-mile terrain of the U.S.-Mexico border. U.S. authorities have been working with a Philadelphia-based company, Ghost Robotics, for two and a half years to develop robot patrol dogs that have special sensors and can carry equipment to identify the drugs, nuclear materials, and chemical weapons. These robot dogs can also explore confined spaces and have long-range and night vision cameras, according to the CEO of Ghost Robotics. The effectivity of robot dogs to patrol the border is still under review by Senator Mark Kelly. Some Democrats, however, oppose the use of it, as the U.S.-Mexico border is already overly militarized. It has also gained criticisms from Border Network for Human Rights, stating that the government has invested a lot of money in military technology without considering changing the immigration policy that would fix the broken systems. Kath? Thank you, Jane Robles, for that live report.
Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering this week and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Westwood, and I'm here today with commentary editor Cotton Carroll. And Con, more than two million people were stopped at the southern border just this past year trying to uh, cross illegally. And initially, the Biden administration said they were going to expel most of those people under Title 42, trying to calm fears about the border crisis. Did that end up happening? Well, they have expelled uh, or rejected, they, they cross the border, immediately send them back to uh, Mexico, about half of them, a little over half. Um, but the other half are taken into the country and uh, basically giving pieces of paper saying, please appear in court about 90 days from now, um, and you can go wherever you want. And so this is close to a million people that have been let into the United States over the past year um, that may or may not show up in court. Um, we'll see. But even it doesn't, it doesn't matter because that whole process, even if they do show up in court for that first date, the backlog of asylum cases is so large that it takes three years to get, even get a decision. And even if a decision is finally given, the ICE is not going to show up, it's on immigration and customs reform, is not going to show up to deport them. So 90% of them end up just staying. You wrote an editorial this week about how DH Secretary, DHS Secretary Mayorkas essentially admitted f a failure of, of the Biden administration's policies when talking to Border Patrol agents. What did he say? Yeah, so I mean, this wasn't a public speech, but it mm -hmm. was uh, someone recorded him talking to um, Border Patrol agents in the Yuma sector. And he basically admitted that, look, um, the border is as terrible as it's been in 20 years. Um, and a lot of that is due to our policies, but that's just the reality and you have to deal with it and the Border Patrol agents were not happy. <laughs> and Mayorkas has also said this time publicly that deep that, that uh, entering the country illegally is not enough of an offense to be deportable, essentially. They, the interior enforcement had sort of changed in that way. How is that consistent with what President Biden and Kamala Harris have said over this past year about encouraging migrants not to come because they'll be turned away? Oh, it's completely inconsistent, <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is an interview he gave with CBS where he was trying to um, assuage liberal audiences that look, we're not Trump, we're trying to change the immigration system. And his quote was, we have fundamentally changed immigration enforcement in this country. And he's right, they have. They've specifically said, look, if you come to this country illegally, we're not going to deport you unless you do something else. So for all those million immigrants that we talked about earlier, who are gonna apply for asylum, that process takes three years. As long as they don't get in trouble for anything else, and even then, a DUI doesn't count. Um, the Biden administration is, is not going to appoint. So they're essentially saying, come here, and if you make it in, you can stay forever. And finally, in that same editorial, you also point out that the Biden administration has had an incoherent approach to the Remain in Mexico policy. Tell us about that. Sure. So um, the Biden administration, on day one, ended President Trump's Remain in Mexico policy, which basically says you can apply for asylum in the United States, but you have to wait in Mexico those three years while your case is being heard. Biden got rid of that on his first day. But then Texas and Missouri sued in federal court and won a court order saying, no, you have to re-implement that policy because you can't just let people in and go wherever they want to go. So the Biden administration is saying, yes, we're going to follow that court order. We're going to re-implement the Remain in Mexico policy, but they're still fighting it in court. So they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. Well, Khan, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. You can get more writing from Khan and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.